1992, 16 years old, got me a car, started low riding, had my brother hook me up with a, some cut coil springs on an Ozenville Cutlass, had two 12s in the trunk, I was the dig at school, I, w I wanted to find my, my spot, see I grew up not really being the most popular kid in the world. I mean, I played baseball. I played rec basketball. I had friends, like I, I had friends that I still have today. So it wasn't that I was the unpopular kid. I just wasn't the popular kid. And in high school, you kind of feel like that's where you're supposed to be. That's where you want to be. But what that does is that, that makes you conform. You're conforming to something that you're not. And I did that for a lot of years of my life. So being a kid that was 300 pounds, six foot tall in the eighth grade, always getting picked on. Most people thought it was just innocent, but it hurts deeper than that when you're on the other side of that. You don't understand that when you're doing it to somebody. You do understand it when you're receiving that. So at 16, after I got the cool car and got some friends that were a little older than me, I decided I'd just quit school in November 1992. That landed me here in the Vernon White building. My mom was destroyed at my decision to quit school. Talked and talked and talked to me to not do it. What I agreed to do though is that I'd agree that I would quit school and I'd come straight to Pitt and I'd get my GED and I'd go to college. And, and, and mom, I'd have, it, I'd have my GED done before my friends even get out of high school. Like, can we get a head start on life? And it did. It did. I got my GED right here in this, in this building at Pitt Community College in 1993. Started going to class here. After my GED, I, I got into computer programming. I was working a full-time job. My parents couldn't afford to pay for my schooling. Um, and, and not have me work. So full-time job, full-time hours at class. I, I did it for a couple of semesters and then I was done. But that whole time I was conforming. I was conforming to what I thought the world wanted to see from me. And that was the mistake and the mistake that a lot of young people make. That's the message I want to get across. It's don't conform. God made you in His vision, in His perfect sight. He knows who He wants you to be. But you got to lean into Him. You can't lean into TikTok and YouTube or your, your local news channel. Or you can't lean into your friends. You can't lean into your car club. You can't lean into those people around you to ask for advice on who you're supposed to be. Who you're supposed to be, the only person that knows that's God. The more you steer the other direction, the more you conform to this world, the less you're walking with God. You know, I've heard this saying many times that God's a gentleman. He's going to come knock on your door, but you got to answer it. He's not going to come busting in and say, hey, I'm God Almighty. Don't you want to change your ways? No, that's our choice. God gives us choice. And in uh, Romans 12, Paul says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. The way you think. Our mind a lot of times is our biggest captivity in our life. Our brain allows us to think that we're not who we're supposed to be or we're not good enough or we're not at the place we're supposed to be in. Look, all this is is a plan. 
This is a plan, and the closer you get to the Creator, the one that created the plan, the more you'll understand the plan. The more you'll lean into the plan, the more God will show you the plan. The more you'll be able to see the signs around you that God's pointing you in the right direction, but you've got to listen. You've got to pay attention. You can't think that you're going to just wake up one day and say, Oh God, please take me out of this misery and you go back to your Jack Daniels and hit it a few times and think that that's the way you're going to take care of it. It ain't the way. It ain't the way. I've tried it. The way is to get your, get your mind right. Mind, body, soul, right? Well, soul should be first in that statement. Because if you get your soul right, then your mind and body follows. But you got to get close to God. You got to allow God into your soul. Open yourself up. Allow God to talk to you. Listen to what He's saying. Don't ignore the signs around you. There is no coincidence in life. There is no coincidence in life. God directs our path. The fact that I'm sitting in front of Pitt Community filming this video right now is a plan that God had for me a long time ago. It just took me forever to figure out what the plan was. It took me forever to listen. Look, just don't conform to the world. This is a very temporary place for us. Have eternal thoughts. Your temporal thoughts, temporary thoughts, are based off of what you see here in the, what, 70, 80 years that you're living here? 90, 100 if you're lucky? They're so temporary. You love the people around you. You love the, the people that don't love you back. There is gratitude in that. There's blessing in that. There's peace in that. Don't allow somebody else's misery to steal your peace by conforming to their misery. Get closer to God and allow Him to show you the peace that you deserve. Every one of us deserves that peace. We have to know how to get there. And you get there through the book of instruction. Dive into the Bible. Read a scripture a day. Start somewhere. Take baby steps. Don't try to, try to take strides. Take small steps. But we got to make it in God's plan. And in God's time. And with God's will. God loves every one of us. You have to accept that love. You have to understand that love. And you have to find ways to create the peace through God's love. And God's going to show you that. I promise you, God's going to show you that. Just trust and believe. Have faith. Know that He's there for you. He rides beside me every single day, all day. Every time I have a thought come to my brain that I'm like, man, what do I, what do, I do in this situation? I turn to my homie Jesus beside me and I'm like, yo, I need some help with this. He helps me. What's ironic is a lot of times when I'm asking him for help, the thought that I had that I thought was so important and so pressing in my life, a lot of times the thought disappears because it's not. It's not important. It's not pressing. It's not your worry. We worry so much about things that we shouldn't worry about. It ain't our worry. If you're walking around without God right now, I guarantee you're heavy. All I'm trying to do is lighten the load. Why walk around with all the burdens of this world on you when God over 2,000 years ago sent His Son here to take that from us? Why would you walk around every day heavy worrying about what's going to happen next week? Where are your kids going to end up? What worries do you have today? What worries can God take from you today? There's no reason for anybody in this world to go around heavy. Lighten the load. Don't conform. Let God show you the path that you're supposed to be on. That's the path that you need to be on. That's the path of peace. That's the perfect path. I love you. Real life testimony.